certainly look is that when you take a picture with your camera, the dynamic range is very, very large, okay? But a painting, the dynamic range is less because when a painter paints, it can't do the same dynamic range as your um, photo. So when I'm editing like this, I am decreasing the dynamic range. So what does that mean? I'm making the darks brighter and I'm making the lights darker. And then the dynamic range becomes less. And so therefore, you can create a painterly look. So let's go into this a little bit. And what I quickly do, like five minutes. Okay, so there's in camera, and this is what I do with Lightroom. So I first take it into Lightroom, and, and uh, what am I doing in Lightroom? Here's my settings. One, I'm taking, you see the contrast? I'm taking the contrast way down, because that will even out the dynamic range. And then I'm taking the brightest parts of the image and I'm making them darker. So I take the highlights and I move the highlights all the way down. And then I'm taking the whites, which are also the brightest part of the image, and I'm pulling them all the way down, lowering the contrast, okay? And then I want to have that HDR look, you know? Sometimes you want that detail in there, especially if you're doing a landscape picture. You want to see all the detail, the beautiful detail of that image. So I'm taking my clarity and I'm pulling it all the way up, and that gives me that HDR look. But you gotta lower your contrast, bring up the clarity, and that's how you get that HDR look. Then, I love adding a little bit of noise reduction because even I shot this at ISO 100, I don't have any noise. But why would I reduce the noise in it? But what noise reduction does, it automatically smooths the skin out. And so if you want some real fast skin smoothing, just turn up your noise reduction and it will smooth out your skin. And then it's very important to have the skin tones look realistic. And when you're pulling up the vibrance and in your photo, a lot of times it pulls up the orange. And orange affects the skin. Do you know what the hardest skin to edit is? Asian skin. Why? Because our skin is more low, uh, yellow. So when we want to push up the vibrance and we want to make it pop, what happens is we turn the skin more orangish yellow on Asians and it looks terrible. So I learned this technique because I had to edit a lot of Asian clients and I learned that you just take, you select the orange color and you just pull back the saturation and that gives you a nice color on the skin. All right? And so then now in the highlights, what this does, it says it takes your brightest parts of your image and color it. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving it a slight yellow feel where the highlights are. And that gives me a sunset effect, right? Because when we go at sunset, the sun is lower and it's oranger. So now what I'm doing is giving a warm tone and then also in the darks, Let's see here, the shadows, I'm, instead of having it black, I'm giving it a little blue instead. And this brings out the blue in the sky also. And it also lowers my contrast, okay? So that's a, like a little setup you can do in Lightroom. Now I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop. There's the before. And there's the Lightroom. And now I'm gonna take it into Photoshop and do something like that. Okay, so how, how do I do that? In Photoshop, I'm gonna even out the dynamic range, which I'm gonna talk about. And also, I'm gonna add a warm tone, which also I'm gonna talk about. I also smooth the skin sometimes and add grain, and I'll get into the reason why I add grain a little bit later, but I'm not gonna talk about how to smooth skin. You can figure that out. That's a lot of, there's a lot of workshops on that. So so, when, and so let's have, this is how I create that tone. Okay, here it is, right from Lightroom. I bring it into Photoshop.
Photoshop. And what I'm doing is looking for the darkest areas where it might not show detail. And I'm taking a brush and I'm lightening in, my, in the darkest areas. Why? Because I want to decrease my contrast. That's what a painting looks like, right? A photo gives you a wide range, but a painting doesn't have that wide dynamic range. So I'm taking all the darks and I'm lightening them if it looks like there's no detail there. And then also I'm taking the light, the brightest parts, and I'm reducing the contrast there and making it darker. But in this particular image, I didn't have any bright, anything too bright, so I didn't need to do that. So after that, okay, so after I even out and distribute the exposure, I want to give everything a warm tone under it. So I want to take everything that's white and turn it slightly uh, vintage yellow, right? And so I made these colors, and this one actually is called, uh, what is it? Warm glow, what do I call it? Warm glow. So you want to take a warm glow, so what you do is, I take another layer, I add another layer, and I fill it with that color. And then I change the blending mode to multiply. That's the key part. You change the mode to multiply, and it mixes the two together. And so now, everything that is white, turns, gets filled in with my warm color. So I'm decreasing again the dynamic range by making the brightest parts a color, okay? And so now when I do that and hit multiply, I get this beautiful warm tone to it. And then I find, then I bring it back into Lightroom again and fine tune it. And a lot of fine tune, what I do is I desaturate it. Okay? So I take everything and I desaturate the color because I don't want it to look like real life because it's a painting. Okay? And so I wanted to give it this little bit of a surreal look, so I desaturate a bit. And then I fine tune uh, everything like, uh, you know, uh, you know, skin smoothing and all that kind of stuff. And I also mess around with the saturation and a little bit there. And then you kind of massage the image one more time to get the way you want it according to the colors that it is. All right? So I don't know if anybody has any questions about anything, but I'll be, yes? Uh, two things. One is that process, how long does it actually take you to do this fix? This process, how long does it actually take? That is a great question. Well, I've been doing this for about 15 years, so, and sometimes I sit there and I experiment the heck out of it, and it could take me a half an hour just because I like the image and I'm working with it. See, I have a passion about Photoshopping, so I want to get it to my signature style. Sometimes it could take half an hour, sometimes it could take five minutes if I know exactly what I'm doing. 